As the great Keith Jackson used to say, oh, Nelly, do we have a podcast for you today, everyone. We welcome you to the latest and always greatest edition to all the Patriots pals and Fox Pro friends of Six Rings and Football Things. Brought to you by, of course, WEI Odyssey and 2400 Sports. Rest easy, all ye mighty members of Patriots Nation, for you are just over two weeks away from the draft. The wait is almost over. Your mock draft fatigue will be set to ease. And until then, we will give you nothing but the highest quality prospect previews, analysis, insight information, and whatever else we can put together to validate yapping in your ears for 30 to 45 minutes at a time. To start things off today, you got your old pals, Nick Fitzy Stevens and Andy Jumbo Hart. We will be joined momentarily by Mike Pizza Party Cadillac. I think that's what we... Is we, do we call him pickle pizza? Do we call him pizza party? Pickle pizza. Okay. Got it. You okay. The pickle in there. He's, everybody eats pizza. It's the few, the proud, and the Mike Cadillacs that really fixate on pickles. I think that's what I think that's their family crest. The few, the proud, the Cadillacs. <laughs> Although, a quick aside. Uh, Is not he a Roman pickle, Catholic? Pizza. Um, we can ask him when he joins us. Um, oh, hey, look at hey, the hey, devil. Oh. It's the pickle man himself. It's a, that the parking what, lot. Cadillac, oh. I just gave you, I just introduced you. Because we've been trying to give everyone their 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 extra pod name. Like I'm Nick Fitzy Stevens. He's sure. Andy Jumbo Hart. So we have decided if you're cool with it, you're Mike Pickle Pe- uh, Pickle Pizza Catholic. That's fine with me. That works. I mean, it's right. it's what I've turned myself into anyway. There's more pictures of Pickle Pizza than there is this like stadium behind me on my Twitter feed. Anyway, <laughs> so we might as well go for it. As they said in True Detective season two, the only good takeaway from that abysmal follow up to a great TV show sometimes. You get the world you deserve, and you, sir, deserve a world full of pickled pizzas. So congratulations. Mike joins us right now, everyone. If you're not watching uh, on YouTube or any of our socials, Mike is joining us outside on, dare I say, Andy, perhaps the most beautiferous day to date in young 2024. It's going to top off around 70. There's no eclipsed sunshine. There's a blue sky. We're all in good moods. Okay. Uh, let's tap. Let's touch on the eclipse real quick before we get into the press conferences oh, that Mike was covering. Um, and also, and also, ask Andy. Andy, did you fall for the video where everyone sent it to each other of the sunshine, and then a gentleman's private parts dropped in front of the? Oh, sun. I didn't. No, no, because I'm better than that. Um, but it did make me queasy. The the I I did not feel good during the eclipse. It affected really my, my belly and my head. Yeah, I felt like I, uh, sick, nauseous. Like, did they did they on. talk about that? Because I know for I know like it gets weird with the whole like the light going down when your body's not ready to start producing melatonin. <laughs> Pets kind of go crazy. Deer were uh, out. There were, I saw more deer in the mid afternoon. I think they thought it was like dusk coming, and then dusk didn't come. It got bright again because there were deer in fields. It was weird. I gave it the accidental look see too with the right eye, and I saw like a little. And yeah. I know and. My fiance was like, you know, what are you too cool to wear the glasses? And I was like, no, I just accidentally looked too, like too much under the thing. And then I just, I, I lost it. And I, Me too. I had a little, little glare in my eye, but no, yeah, it you... was, it was pretty cool, but I, overrated, I think is the right word for it. It was cool to go out on your back deck. It wasn't cool enough for the people that drove like hundreds and thousands of miles to see it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Clogging up the highways of New Hampshire and Vermont yeah. and everything. Just like absolutely bananas. Dare I say uh, Andy, we were doing a podcast with Mike Giardi last Friday when my office shook and it turns out oh, yeah. there was an earthquake, you know, 50 miles away from where I reside. That's actually a, a bit more extreme or a bit more whelming, if you will, than the underwhelming nature of the eclipse. That said, I looked through the glasses. It was pretty cool, but it's kind of done. I mean, well, like, I also do else. enjoy, and this is ironic for me since I hate everybody and I don't really like being around people and, <laughs> and everything. Yeah, kind of. Um, I, I kind of like these unifying events where everybody is sort of thinking and doing the same thing or a large portion. Like you, I was driving down the road to take my daughter to practice, and there's just people everywhere in their front yeah. yards with the glasses on staring that's at the cool. sky. And I, I think that's cool in this day and age when we can actually get people sort of unified in one direction. That's a good point. And that was a, it was a cool event. But now now we can move on a, to more important things. I have a feeling that's going to segue to trying to get everyone unified into hashtag take Drake. But uh, yeah. I will say I'm this. A maniac, was, maniac. Uh, it just doesn't yeah. feel we're gonna like have it's going to pay happen, so- boys, anymore. No. We were just having that discussion in the media no. room, how it just feels way, way, way too good to be true. Andy, we've done it on our last like three or four pods together where 
it feels like everyone's in the same direction. Drake May, Drake May. We loved Jaden Daniels at one point. We turned into maniacs. We're going to get Daniels, and we're going to be disappointed for some reason. We're probably going to get a, a kick-ass quarterback at number three. It, it's way. very easy. It's very easy. All you have to do is say, Jaden will take us duck boat parading. You're welcome. It's okay. terrible. Yeah. No, it's, it's more. Fan, it's what fantastic. About JJ? Um, no. no, JJ McCarthy. Na- no, nay, nay no. for JJ. Nay, nay no. for JJ. Stay yeah, away, JJ. Or, or how Boy about Giardi, this? Friend of the show seems gung ho on JJ. Yeah, I, I was, I was just gonna say on BSJ and everything. Yeah, yeah, and don't worry about it. It's not gonna be eat a bag of Nicks either because Bo Nicks. I don't even think is gonna go in the first round. <laughs> You're uh, finally off the Bo Nicks train, then. I, I listen. You've uh, been talked off it. Keith and I would be, I would go, I would be fine with Marvin Harrison Jr. three, Bo Nix at 34 and the chaos that fall, that follows, but that's no, not going to happen. The losing that follows. Forget I just, the chaos. It's the losing that well, follows. Losing that is also chaotic, so that's fine. No, losing but, is what we keep doing. I'd rather they turn a corner and start winning and have hope and opportunity. Not that you know what it is, agony. Mike? It's that now, like with just over two weeks left, it's almost like at this point, we've been doing the same show, the same podcast, variations therein for five months now. I don't have the time. I don't have the the strength or the resilience to just continue it, with narratives that I, we all know are not. Bo Nix is not going to be a Patriot, so I'm done with that. I don't even care about it. And by and large, from everything I've heard, Michael Penix will not be a Patriot. So I'm not even going to continue to pursue what I thought would have been a fun reality of Penix at 11, Guyton at 23, and then Leggett at 34. We br- pretty much need to focus on the big three because Caleb Williams is going first overall. Can we just... Can somebody please either stop lying or figure out what is honestly true? Because last week we get Schefter saying, you know, Daniels is pretty much going to, which means the Patriots will have their choice of Drake May at three. Then on Friday, there's a bunch of tweets saying, oh, the commanders are actually in love with Drake May. Adam Peters has been enamored with him for a long time. Now it's going to be now it's going to be Jaden Daniels season for the Patriots as well. Now we got Giardi Wilden on the podcast with Taylor Kyles. Yep. And if you can see right now, I just am seeing now because the scrambled vision of Andy uh, came in for two seconds on my screen. I had no idea you had a hundred balloons behind you in your room, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> I had no party idea you were, time. you were throwing a party. Um, it's a um, JJ McParty. And that's right. It's Andy's having a JJ party. Um, and now we've got freaking, you know, Giardi's wild in with Taylor Kyle saying he's heard very definitively that the commanders and the Patriots are enamored with JJ McCarthy. So you guys, since it's only my job to fanboy and try to steer the ship, you guys have a little bit more of the inside knowledge. Somebody please tell me what's true. What's not true. What's bullshit. What's not. And where is all this leading? I mean, I'll say that I think there's uh there's too much smoke now around JJ McCarthy to the Patriots for there not to be some sort of fire. Now, will they take them at number three straight up? that i mean there's no way of knowing right now but clearly they they have their rankings and whether it be to call it daniels may mccarthy may mccarthy daniels may da- like whatever the order is i think he's in the conversation because i don't think these you know these reports and rumors and i know this and we know that would continue to come out if there wasn't some truth to it now i don't think they should take him at three i don't think anybody really at, at least in the, on the media side thinks they should take him at three um, but if they feel confident enough and that's their guy, they're not going to trade. I don't think, I don't think they should risk taking or trading back and taking the guy at six, seven, eight, whatever, because then another team's just going to jump them. So it, it's, it might really be how the board, you know, ends up falling and who ends up going number two, depending on who they take at three. Yeah. And that's yeah. what Perilla was saying last week, Andy, like if you like the, whoever it is, take him at take whoever you right. no one ever, no one even remembers whether a guy went four or six if he's either really good or really bad he's right. a bust if he's really bad and he's a franchise qb and he's really good and it's, no one says well you took him at four but he would have been better value at six no 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 it's the same freaking thing you took a top 10 quarterback he's either good or bad it's about the player not the pick so as much as i hate it if they think jj mccarthy is the best quarterback for them then sit take him at three and then i'll rip you in two years when he's a bust and you're looking right. for another quarterback like you need to have conviction. Elliot Wolf needs to have. Now, I just think, first of all, if any of these teams are any good at their jobs, what mm-hmm. they really think is not out there. Or if it is out there, it's jumbled in with seven other thoughts. Because you're terrible at your job if you actually let people know what you're doing and what you're planning. Who brought the cool guy? Cool guy. My eyes are out here. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's the, yeah, uh, we got the. 
the, the bro with the Oakleys on. You're, oh, you're suffering from post eclipse. You you yeah, have a case exactly. of the eclipticals. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Scorched retina happens to everybody, Mike. It's okay. Okay, so yeah. let's um let's get into the reason you're here, though, Mike. We just had the first official. Yep. In the middle of the off season program media availability, we are rolling in Foxborough. All your buddies on social media were showing us like, oh, I'm at work. I think Fitzy and I should not should start sending out things like when we go to the Rich Keefe show, like send yeah. out a tweet so people can praise us for showing up for our job. Like, I don't really understand this. Like, oh, look, yeah, yeah, Christian Gonzalez is in the weight room. Yeah, it's his effing job. I'd be <laughs> mad if he wasn't. If he takes a picture on the beach this week, I'll rip his ass, get in the weight room and get healthy. But they are in the offseason program. They've started the process. And you were able to speak with Hunter Henry and uh, Pep Smear Peppers. Um, are we not doing that? Pep smear? <laughs> you know, when he you're going to give really me a hard. hard time on duck boat parading with Jaden, and you're going to do pep smear? Yeah. Well, he kills people. He wipes them out, so that makes them pep smears. Um, we did but, speak with no. Hunter and Jabril. We did. What yeah, was, okay, what uh, was thank you, takeaway? Mike. Thank you for being the one lone professional in this room. <laughs> <laughs> what was the takeaway? Was it exciting? Uh, was there a vibe? Was there yeah, energy? Yeah, there, there was a vibe. There was, there, it's the... It's the new, the new era energy, the new Mayo yeah. era energy that they keep, um, you know, portraying. And I don't mean portraying as if it's fake, but I mean, it's, you know, but Henry said it straight up. It's different. Things feel different in the building. You can tell. And then mm -hmm. when he was asked, well, what's different? He goes, well, I'm not going to tell you, but <laughs> <laughs> there is a different, there's clearly a different vibe inside these walls um, with Mayo being there. They both alluded to both, uh, both Henry and Fabers alluded to the fact that he's a former player. So he relates to them. Um, he's been literally in these seats, both on the on the desk and in the building and then also as a coach. So um, I guess that sort of helps their cause. But, yeah, that was the main takeaway was just that Henry wanted to come back because he wanted to be a part of this rebuild. He was a captain last season, feels like more of a leader now. Um, he loves the spring, even though Andy doesn't like us tweeting that, you know, guys are in the building. They like being in the building. They like being mm -hmm. back to work. And so. Um, it seems like more so obviously team building right now, but um, no, both guys seemed excited. They also, uh, Jabril Peppers was asked about the hip drop tackle and he's still pissed about the hip drop tackle. He doesn't like the fact that it was banned saying that right. he doesn't know how it's going to be officiated. And uh, you know, he's never almost said he doesn't feel like he should have to worry about the health and safety of the offensive players when he's just trying to make a tackle, which I don't necessarily disagree. I mean, you obviously want everybody to be safe, but you don't have to be thinking about it. You should just be able to go make your tackle. So uh, that was sort of the main takeaway with him. Um, and then, geez, what else? Yeah, basically just it's a new era with Mayo here. So uh, both guys seem excited. Yeah, so, I mean, that that's completely on brand and it tracks with Jabril Peppers because violence is his resting state. So I, right. I get it. He's his old school football you know, n name one player on the Patriots who'd pull a Ronnie Lott and cut off a finger to get back on the field. It would probably oh, be Jabril Peppers. Oh, did also Peppers. get a little bit of insight into Matthew Slater's new role. So, Ooh, what is he? Is some um, sort of, like, cultural ambassador with the well, team? or I'll go back to um, getting mad at Andy for making fun of my tweets. Uh, if we didn't search yeah, for the yeah. photos, we would have never seen Matthew Slater walk into the building alongside Juju Smith-Schuster yesterday. He was here. Now, Reese did report it, so maybe I am uh, backing myself into a corner with the looking at the photos. But nonetheless, Matthew Slater is inside the building. Peppers was asked what his role was. He said it said advisor, whatever that means, next to his name. So he is uh, essentially on the staff as an advisor mm -hmm. um, on the team. So he is okay. uh, remains in the building and is going to be a guy who they can uh, throw ideas off of and whatnot. So Matthew official, Slater is back. Official, like, Patriot Way advisor or whatever. And, and look, if there were going to be anybody... If there were going to be a tone setter, a cultural ambassador, if you will, whatever it is, his capacity, the one guy I think we all could agree you'd want to have in there is Matthew Slater. And it doesn't surprise me in a lot of ways. I don't, I'm not sure what you guys think uh, Hunter Henry could have gotten if he went out to the free market, but like he shows up yesterday wearing a Chatham Bars in sweatshirt. Like yeah. that's the nicest place on the Cape. Like he's acclimated. He, very, he does. He really, I think he really does, which is great. And those are the kind of guys that we want sticking around as well. I, you know, I think he's going to have a terrific, uh, he'll probably be Jacoby Brissett and then insert name of future quarterback here's favorite target. He'll be, we would have liked a, a Keenan Allen, like Caleb Williams got as a draft present, but you know, so, so be it as well. Um, and I've heard from when I stopped by the Patriots, when they had their draft part, the pre-draft party a couple weeks ago on a Saturday mm -hmm. staffers and other people I spoke with former players, everyone keeps saying the same thing. It is very different there now. 
and there's no one single something that they can point to, but it does feel a little, um, I don't know. How would you say it, Andy? Like lighter, if you will, like not like ha ha yuck, yuck, but it's like, there's, you're not looking around every corner, like waiting for Belichick to come around the corner and you say, it hi coach. And he like, MFs you. It almost feels like, sorry, there's a construction going on behind me now. I don't know if you lost me. Everything's but, a uh, work in progress. We're with the metaphors. It's all good. Uh, it's almost like you're at school and like the principal's out or more so like your teacher's out for the day and you have a sub there and like you kind of maybe you're towing what you can get away with what you can't can i talk while they're talking can i do this and that it's almost like it gives me that feel because even being in there today i'm looking and i'm I'm taking a step back and nobody has asked about belichick yet and i couldn't decide if i wanted to ask but someone else did finally and i was like it, before that it almost felt like you know we're back here and everything's normal but the one guy that sort of run the show, run the party the whole time, is just not here anymore. And it's almost like we forget that he was ever here. So it is kind of like a weird feeling that I, I'm back at work. They're back at work. Gillette Stadium's open. There's Patriots logos everywhere. But Bill Belichick's gone. And, and I think the comparison you made to the, the sub, but I would add a layer to it. I would say it's not in science class or math class. It's a sub in like art or English where suddenly with that dictator gone, people are like – a little more comfortable just throwing stuff out there, talking, yeah. being creative, like interacting with each other and the boss, like in that level. Right. And whether that's good or bad, we can we can assess later on because it's going to be measured by one simple thing. <laughs> Results. Yep. If you if you win single digits for the next three or four years. Well, you won't even get that long. If you win single digits, you'll get a couple of years and you'll be out and we'll be talking about the new culture. But I do think it's interesting that these two guys are. Um, we saw David Andrews do a video yesterday, but that these two guys are, I think, taking on, obviously, Hunter Henry, a returning captain, Julius Pe uh, Jabril Peppers is a defensive leader just by nature, I feel like, of his yeah. attitude and work ethic and hitting and style. But it feels like these are early follow me kind of guys. Do you think that's these are going to be culture setters for Gerard Mayo? Hundred uh, percent. Them too, and then you you mentioned Andrews, but Jonathan Jones as well um, ended up doing sort of one of those welcome video things. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think that's uh, I, I forget if it was me and you, Andy, we were talking about it, but like a, a leadership council, if you will, of a team. Like I think we talked about it on our uh, prospect pod the other day, having guys like that. I think you could certainly point to those four as being the uh, yeah the, the centers of of each side of the football and then you don't really have it yet with with special teams with Slater gone but he's now back in the building um so yeah no definitely um obviously Henry being a uh, a captain captain level player I would say and then I think they look towards um or I, I guess I know they look towards Jabril Peppers as well as a captain level player that's that's somebody who I want doling out advice or putting people in their place like 100%. rookies or second year players new guys come in and think they can even though Peppers has only been there for two years, if they can affect change or be tone setters, uh, he's somebody I, th I think if you could pick one Patriot from this team now and drop them in 20 years ago, like doesn't Jabril Peppers make the oh, most yeah. sense that he would have fit in on a tie and Rodney would have loved the, Oh my God. Oh, hip drop tackles. No, uh, no hot mics on the field against the Giants. Just a, a football player who can just go out and play. And we really you play. lucky. We ass. I still feel like making yeah. those shirts. Honest to God. You, uh, and he, was, we talked we, when we did our, I, I keep alluding to my conversations with Andy. It's almost like they mean something, but, uh, we did, we did it on a, a one-off Wednesday. We talked about the captains and the way peppers took full accountability, responsibility after that comment. And he didn't hide from it. He didn't duck from it. And why are you dancing like that in your green sweatshirt? Cause I was validated by Mike Cadlick, the pickle uh, guy. Yeah. Big, uh, big ups. Somebody half your age just validated you. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, you. Do you want us to pause the podcast so you can do a quick victory lap around the house? I'm cool with the young people. I feel like Robert Kraft when he hangs out with Meek Mill. Yeah, right. Oh, thunder. Geez. That's my thunder right there. Yeah, Dumbo. he exactly. Yeah, he's got um, mad riz. Um, <laughs> yeah, but no, regardless, Peppers is that guy. He's he's stand up. He, he knows yeah. what he's doing. So he is a captain level player. For sure. Um, hey, Mike, uh, I wanted to uh, dip away from the QB. Obviously, we've addressed the QBs and you yeah. got you there at the stadium for the Peppers and Hunter reaction as the Pats are back in for the spring workouts. T minus 16 days till the draft. You want to stick around and do some Pats pre with us or you got some blogging to do? Um, yeah, let's do it. Why not? Okay. All right, let's make our way into the second half, the back half of the podcast. Thank you guys all for subscribing, for tuning in. Please remember several key dates coming up, of course. Draft night, it's going to be the 6 to midnight Rich Keefe all-night draft show. You'll have Shime, 
Hart and Keith in studio. You'll have Cadlick at location TBD. Yep. I will be at the stadium uh, hosting the draft party and checking in with you guys, bringing you live analysis from the Pats fans as well. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. Lock it in, rip off the knob, and tell your friends they all should be tuned in as well. April 18th from 7 to 10 p.m. at Vitamin C, we'll be doing the fundraiser for Boston Children's Hospital in memory of Hallie Kide. If you need information on that, jump on over to my socials at FitzyGFY. Um, it's going to be a great time for a great cause and a great man. All right, let's get to the other news, notes, nuggets, rumblings, and bumblings in Patriots Nation right now. Uh, the top 30 visits continue to pour into Gillette Stadium. Uh, Mike, Andy, I just read that Florida State tight end Jaheim, Jaheim Bell is visiting. Yeah. What can you guys tell the listeners about him? Uh, we actually haven't touched on the tight ends yet for uh, Six Rings Prospects, but what I know about Bell is that this isn't the only interest they've had in him. Um, I believe Ooh. they had uh, in, in, a pre-draft interview with him at either the Combine or the Senior Bowl or one of these events. I forget which one. Um, and I believe someone was at the Florida State Pro Day as well uh, for Bell. So definitely interested in him as a tight end prospect to bring in. Um, you know, we have Henry. We have uh, Austin Hooper on the roster as well. But besides that, it's slim pickings in the tight end room. So uh, you wonder when... Uh, they actually address the position, whether it be in draft, whether they bring in somebody else off the free agent market. But uh, they definitely have uh, more than just one um, one meeting, one sort of, I guess, arm of interest in Bell because they met with them before, too. Yeah, we've been saying this a lot uh, on the prospect podcasts. Sneaky needs. Ah, cornerbacks yeah. a sneaky need. Ah, tight ends a sneaky need. Huh, running backs a sneaky need. I would say tight end. It's not a great class. It drops off dramatically after Brock Bowers. Um, and when there might be a little run of the second tier could affect things dramatically, but it wouldn't stun me for the, I'd probably say a day three pick. I don't think they would address it in the first two days, yeah. but a day three pick on tight end would not stun me because I think they've learned the lesson. I know it's a new regime, but the post Gronk, Oh crap, we don't have tight ends. Now we got to overpay in free agency era. Um, trying to bring a young developmental guy in while you have Henry, while you mm -hmm. have Hooper, to try to, you know, Belichickian style year too early, don't scramble later. Um, right. I think that's part of this process. What I like, uh, and I think our our pal Mike Dusso in his latest mock for Patriots.com had, I believe, out of Kansas State, uh, Ben Sinnott. Yeah, fullback uh, slash tight end. I'm, six, I have four, no problem with that. Yeah, what do you think? Oh, yeah, 6'4", 250. I'm losing my mind. We did. I was going to say, I don't I know what you guys, happened. I yeah, we you guys did. did backs and tight ends recently. Yeah, you we guys, did. I don't know what I'm talking about. You guys it's the clips. It's the sun. I, I shouldn't sure. even be here on Pat's free. I should just go. But Yeah. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind if Sinat uh, was the guy either as well. Um, looks like, you know, high, high rep, uh, athletic score, yep. good experience. But, yes, I think the key, again, just like with whatever quarterback they take, all these guys can play. It's really the system and the coaches and the time that they spend developing and maturing him. All these tight ends, these are big athletic bodies as well. It's it's the system and the people you surround them with. And if you can get somebody like Hunter Henry, who how many years has he been in the league now? Seven, eight, nine. Wow. This I mean, is that's year nine. He that's okay. That today. Been in eight. This is year nine, nine years, Mrs. Bueller. So that's somebody you want to get a young tight end in to learn from right now. So, yep. yeah, it is a sneaky need, and I would love to see them use a high day three pick on that as well. Any other top 30s of late that you guys can uh, put a finger on that would uh, interest the, the people, defensive linemen, offensive I, linemen? I mean, I believe as of this moment, Jaden Daniels is in there somewhere. Um, so Jaden Daniels is here right now on his Go top 30 him. visit. Go uh, get him. Did I? Get him on the pot now. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a new era. Silos have been knocked down. Yeah. Gerard hey, told us he wanted man. us to see things. Go get him. Can you imagine? That would be electric. Yeah. This would be In the, the old one days. You would have been shot, there. but now yeah. you can feel free to chase him. Wow. Shot. Yeah, what is he? Is he a trespasser at Brady's wedding? Jeez. Oh, I yeah, right. yeah, I firmly believe in the old days he would have been shot if he <laughs> started snooping around Jaden Daniels. But today, uh, one, of the new era. one of the musket guys on the field. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Jaden Daniels is here now. J.J. McCarthy next week. Um, okay. And that is the only – May last week, Daniels this week, J.J. the week after. Those are the only three quarterbacks on the top 30 uh, as of right now. And then Tyler Guyton uh, is, was here last week. That's according to Mike Reese. So uh, one of those uh, dipping into the later first-round offensive tackle prospect. Big boy out of uh, Oklahoma, correct? Or Houston? Yes, correct. 
Okay. He's, my, he's been my guy all along. See, I'm not a late arrival like all these others where it's like, oh, I suddenly like Drake May. Nope. Nope. I've been on Guyton for years. Gary Guyton's long lost You're also Jordan cousin. Morgan, though, too, weren't you? Yeah, I kind of want either one of those. those are, yeah, those are my two athletic left tackle types um, that I'd be looking for. Uh, any any receivers or backs that have... Uh, backs. That have what are we talking about? I mean, hey, backs. Come on. I mean, th- listen, you just called it a sneaky need. We got, we got Antonio Gibson reported. bitching about the weather. What do we need a rookie back for? I love that. I, lo- I love the fact that he, he can't handle the cold weather already. And yes, people... He did go to the Celtics, though, so that's a good sign. That's a very good that's a very good sign as well. Um, what do you guys think? It, this guy's definitely going to get... Um, I wanted to hit on this real quick. Obviously, Chad Ryland gets drafted last year, fourth rounder. The fourth round punter, Bryce Barringer, has a solid season. He's he's here for a while. He's a long hauler. I think there's going to be camp competition for Chad Ryland. What do you guys think of, and I'm sure there's probably going to be a line of teams that are going to want to get this guy in camp. Jake Bates, this dude in, that's kicking for Michigan in the UFL, 64 yards one weekend, 62 yarder down the middle with leg to spare the second weekend. Um, how many teams do you think will probably try to ask him or try to put a camp invite on that guy? I'm sure he'll be popular. Uh, he will be. Now, there's a couple good kickers in this draft or rookie free agent class as well. Yeah. Um, but I think the Patriots, you you sort of hit on it. If I'm a guy like that, you're looking at a place where it's not just camp competition. It's competition. I can win right. this job. I'm not, mm-hmm. you know, an emergency list guy. I'm not a preseason let. Nick Folk, keep his leg fresh kind of guy. If you come to New England, I think you're looking at the way Ryland played last year and saying, I I could leave camp as the kicker. So, I mean, take that as whatever you see it. That's a positive for the kicker, but it might allow you to also get a better better guy because he looks at the opportunity. And with Belichick being gone, I feel like there's less of an incentive to keep Ryland around just because he was the fourth round pick. Like if Bill was still here and they, like they miss on the pick, yeah, Wolf and Grow were in the front office, but that wasn't really their pick. So it doesn't really, um, I guess it doesn't really hurt as much if they find competition, someone beats him out and they let him go. So right. there should be a fire under his ass for his job because he wasn't great last year. And it would uh, it would almost be irresponsible for them to not try and uh, bring somebody else in to try and take his job. Yeah, I, he legitimately could stay. I mean, Elliot Wolf, Highsmith, especially Gerard like- Mayo, they're, they're not beholden to... They're not Sorry. beholden to Chad Ryland. Right. Yeah, like they don't they don't owe him anything. So the job should be open. I mean, I think pretty much all jobs will be open. But you did mention that Juju Smith Schuster was walking into the building yesterday. Yeah. What do we what do we put the odds on him uh, making the team and making contributions in 2024? Because I think a lot of Pats fans would have wondered if he would have either not been traded or just cut by this point. I mean, I have a hard time at this point thinking that he's gonna get cut just because of the money he does make. But it wouldn't shock me if they traded him at some point. I mean, if they bring in what they bring in at receiver, depending on what they see from Demario Douglas and Kayshawn Booty in camp, and they also have KJ Osborne, obviously. Like, Mm -hmm. if he ends up being the odd man out, yeah, they might try and trade him for something and get something back for him, see if they can get the contract off. I mean, look, I was a I was a Juju proponent last year. We know that from this show. I was wrong. Um Look, I still, it's tough with the money because you don't want to just cut a guy like that. I think he can still contribute, but I don't think he's necessary on this team either. So it's kind of a weird thing with Juju, especially because of the contract. Yeah, I think he'll be around just because of the contract slash a veteran. He's he's a you know proven kind of guy. I don't know how they'll work to maybe manage him and work through some things and maybe you can get, you know, certain games where you kind of circle it. It's a juju game for matchups yeah. or whatever reason. Now, I, I wouldn't count on him to go out and, you know, play 17 games and catch 85 balls or anything about that. But, I mean, you have Kendrick Bourne coming off an ACL. You have Demario Douglas, who's young and had his issues with head injuries last year. You have Kayshawn Booty, who, I don't know, I wouldn't bet on him being on the roster, if you know what I'm saying. Um, so there's like, there's yeah. a lot of... There's a lot of questions there. So you might, yeah. you know, Juju leaves a lot to be desired, especially for people like Mike, who really had, you know, upside thoughts about him. And you watch what Jacoby Myers did, but he still is kind of a, a solid fallback plan B, whatever you want to call him at this point in his career. And you're paying him. So you might as well utilize right. it. 
Yeah, somebody who was it who just said uh, this was traveling the the Twix yesterday. Uh, some veteran receiver was asked who's the most underrated receiver in the NFL, and the answer was like that. They said Jacoby Myers, and said it was Devontae Adams on. Uh, hmm. Wasn't it? Wasn't that on the pod with with Kraft? I don't think that was on the shop. I think that oh, may okay. have been so, someone else as well. But yeah, mad love for Kobe, which is great because you know how come we can't get players like that. Yep. Um, well, Kirk Cousins also mentioned KJ Osborne. I was just going to, okay. it's, it's like we all, it's perfect. Oh, I'm not saying it like shame on you. I'm just saying like, wow, we're all starting to think yep. like each other. Um, what do you what? guys make of Kirk Cousins saying that KJ Osborne has the capacity to be better than a number three receiver? And it's just that he had to feed Hawk and Jefferson there. He, he thinks the mood of him. Andy, do you think they may have actually gotten maybe a good two or possible one A in disguise? I don't think they got a one A in disguise. I think. Is he maybe a little bit more than what he was based on opportunities and volume? Sure. sure. I think he can be that. But, um, yeah, I think he's still a role complementary. You're still looking for the centerpiece guy for him and others to work around. Um, you know, it, even to the point like his production touchdown-wise fell for three straight years. Like, even if you're a complementary weapon – in theory, you're going to get opportunities like in the red zone when other teams are saying, no, I'm not letting Justin Jefferson score. I'm not letting TJ Hawkinson beat us. And he didn't really maximize those chances. So that's a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, will he have an opportunity? Sure. He might also, also see more coverage than he's used to. So you're going you to have to beat some, him. Uh, you guys want some fun, fun breaking Patriots news? I love fun breaking Patriots news. Christian Gonzalez will officially be wearing jersey number zero next season for the Patriots. Yeah, there it is. I'm glad they you're breaking that, but I got into a fight with a bunch. His number zero. I got into a fight with a bunch of douchebag trolls, you peoples, the other day, who were like, "Well, why'd you say Belichick's gone and now he can finally get his number? Because he wanted that number last year and Belichick wouldn't let him have that number. That's yep. why. That is why. And now he's taking zero, and now that will be hopefully your second most popular jersey behind Drake May." Yeah, I think that'll sell through the roof and off the charts. Can I yeah, experiment something? Highly on logical. If you guys Most can hear me when Idiot. I leave the can you guys still hear me? Yep. Okay, yep. but you can't see me. So we have nope. a full a well, full list of jersey number updates. KJ Osborne number two, Demario Douglas number three, Jacoby Brissett number fourteen, Taki Taki sixteen, Antonio Gibson twenty one. And everyone else is kind of boring because it's the the big guys. But Jacoby Brissett doubling up on the seven he wore when he was first back with the Patriots, going with the Steve Grogan fourteen. I like it. Yep, number fourteen Grogan. for Kobe. Let's get him a neck roll while we're at it too. He's probably yeah. going to need it next year. Uh, guys, I don't think we've actually covered it here. It was the big breaking news over the weekend as well. Your reaction to Kyle Duggar's four-year, fifty-eight to sixty-six million dollar deal coming off the transition tag with a guaranteed thirty-two million. I'm fine with it. I um I don't love the player. I think he's a good, not great player. I think he's a liability in coverage. I think if you can fill that role, he will be a better player. Um, you didn't break the bank for him. You certainly are living up to what I said when when Elliot Wolf said we want to draft, develop, and treat people right. And everybody was like, What's that? A shot at Bill? No, no, no. That was about treating people right financially and contract wise and, and retaining your own people. And I think Kyle Duggar is a great guy for that. I don't think he's a super vocal leader, um, but I do think he's a core player leader behind the scenes. And for the price, I'm fine with it. I didn't want to overpay him and continue to lift the market. I think he kind of slotted in where he probably is. He, he might be a little overpaid, but for a team mm -hmm. that is trying to build a culture and has a lot of money, you can do a little bit of overpayment and it's not a big deal. Yeah, I like it. I mean, we talk about burn cash. They haven't burned cash. They had a hundred million. They spent this. They spent like, that's another 30 guaranteed to Kyle Duggar money that you had a player that you wanted to retain a, a player. You clearly wanted to retain because you trend your transition tag him at first. Now you get it done. You make it cross the finish line. Um, I agree with you as the player, Andy, he's, he's good. He's a good player on a good defense. Um, he can be subject to, uh, some, some struggles in coverage, but that's mm -hmm. stuff that you can always improve on. And you still need that sort of free roaming safety. Like Devin McCourty was here on this defense and pass coverage anyway. So long story short, I like, I like the Duggar move. I think you had the money and you had to bring him back. So, uh, good on them for doing it. Not sure if Bill would have made that kind of signing as well. Back in the day, he may have said, go out, figure out what you can get and come back to us. 
may have actually been a little less money at this point. But like you said, they were comfortable with the money that they had. They actually gave him an increase in average annual value uh, above what the 13 and a half he would have gotten on the transition tag as well. So I'm fine with it. It's not my money. Uh, and more, right. more importantly, he is a he is a good to sometimes very good player. Yes, susceptible to getting burned and cooked sometimes by backs and ends uh, when he's in pass coverage. But he does make some big plays and he's a stout member of the back end of that defense. Now, hopefully in the draft, they can go get a free safety because that is something that they are lacking. Speaking of Bill Belichick, we'll wrap with this. Gentlemen, did you get a chance to watch any of the video of Matt Rule talking about Bill Belichick coming in? and serving up a four and a half hour football guy speech and education session. Talk about the education of a coach uh, with the Nebraska football program. He was brought in as a guest speaker. I think Matt Rule thought he would do 30 minutes to an hour. He did over four hours, and Matt Rule said he had to interrupt him at one point and say at the three-hour mark, Coach, do you want a glass of water? I mean, is that not the most Bill Belichick thing you could have possibly heard? Yeah, and it's expected. I mean, not only is that normal Bill, like passionate, let's just talk football, I can go forever, but the idea that he, he's few and far between maybe with some of those opportunities, so when he has a captive audience and that opportunity, like he's going to get everything he can out of it because he knows a couple days later he might be sitting by himself on Nantucket just talking to himself about football <laughs> and scheme yeah. and things like that. Um, now, I will say, and that was a great story, where and Rule added like, he was like, coach, you need to use the men's room. And he's like, cause I really needed to use the men's room. And yeah. I was hoping he would have to too. Like, um, I liked that story from Matt rule who I don't always find likable. He, he goes back and forth. Sometimes I think he comes off as a colossal douche. And then sometimes I think he comes off as really likable. Um, maybe like me. Um, but I, uh, I, I, you this, said it, not me. No. <laughs> yep. This reaction that Albert Breer and others had that like, it's so crazy that, you know, owners couldn't find, you know, didn't hire Belichick. And I'm like, are we just going to ignore that? He's 72 years old. Like, right. yes, he's a living legend. Less he, yes, he can tell stories, but to just turn the keys of your franchise over to him, isn't as simple as these people make it to see, especially if you have a coach in place, a mediocre coach or, or whatever, like people try to make it out to be like this simple decision to hire Bill Belichick. And I think it's anything but a simple decision. And I also think, I mean, there was some notion that maybe the game had passed him by and that's why they had to move on here. I don't think that's the case. No. I still think he can coach for two, three, maybe four seasons. But you're right, Andy. It's not a turnover or rebuilding franchise to this guy. It's turnover really? a ready-made roster to this guy. And there weren't that many this offseason in the cycle that opened up. So right. the story itself was amazing. Like, it was perfect. Yes. And I love, again, four, th four and a half hours in front of these guys not stopping almost offended that rule asked him for a glass of water. He was like, I'm fine, Matt. Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, it was great. And it, it, it does show you that he's still ready to coach and he's probably going to coach again, maybe next year. Um, even if it's for a year or two. So no, it's, it's a good story. And even people coming in and saying that, Oh, that's, this is why the Patriots shouldn't have let him go. Like, I think most, most of us can agree that it kind of just, it was time here and it, it's time for something new and it's okay that, you know, he can still go talk about coaching for four and a half hours and maybe he'll do it somewhere else to be successful. But it was time for them to move on here. And I think everybody's sort of on that page. And guys, I know this is a Patriots podcast, but we are all Boston sports fans of varying degrees and magnitudes. And we're fired up for hopefully deep playoff runs for the Celtics and the Bruins as well. Bruins are on fire right now. So are the Celtics. Uh, the Red Sox are we're, we're doing this podcast T minus an hour from the start of uh, opening day at Fenway. And good news, everyone. Nick Pavetta to the injured list with right elbow inflammation and Trevor Story officially done for the season. But it was a fun 10 games. Yep. See you next year. Andy, fun you're going to have a great time tearing into that tonight on the Rich Keefe Show. Trevor Story hurt? Who could have ever seen that coming? That's we, tough, too. Like, Story was having a good, good offseason, good year. And yeah. that game three, whatever it was, bang. And it's like he's just made a rubber again. It's Plastic Chris Sale. Too bad. It's Chris Sale all over again. Like, it's J.D. Drew think and Chris Sale, yeah. Do I think Trevor Story wants to play and wants to be good and works hard and like, yeah, all of that. Like, I feel yeah. bad, but it is what it is. You know, you, yeah, right. you can't make the club from the tub, can't help the club from it the tub. It is similar to Chris Sale. You're right, because Sale yeah. was the same guy, like balls to the wall, wants to play, competes his ass off. And then three days in, he's, he's going in for another TJ. And it's like, come on, dude. Like, And it's not his fault. And that's the tough no. part. So, and, yeah, and this it, it one sucks. is even, I know Chris Sale had some of his like off field fall off the bike. 
I mean, this is Trevor Story making a play at shortstop, like right. being aggressive, He's athletic. Out. Yeah. And yeah, this is the definition of you play the game. It's like that U- UFL star destroying who made a big tackle over the weekend and fractured his neck, and now he's done for the season. Like, he's on IR. It's, a, it's a violent sport. What are you going to do? Yep. Uh, all right, boys. Great pod today, Mike. Thanks for taking some time to join us fresh outside the stadium of with course. the info from the Hunters and Peppers. Uh, go find and, Daniels. Yes. Yeah, now we'll go, go back. Get yeah. Emergency we'll, six. We'll let you go. See if you can uh, squeeze a couple with Jaden back in the stadium. We'll keep Although, you guys updated. Is it windy, on- is it windy there? Not terribly. Oh, okay. Because I heard a little wind on your microphone, and I was worried that if he stepped outside, he'd blow away. <laughs> oh, that's that's him. He's uh, just... he's down by the ground round. <laughs> All right, everybody. That's the end of the podcast. We're we're very we apologize. Well, the views of Andy Hart do not represent everyone at Wei Odyssey Twenty Four Hundred Sports. Uh, great podcast, boys. Take care of yourselves. He's at Jumbo Hart. He's the pickle pizza party himself at Mike Cadlick, and I'm at Fitzy GFY. There'll be more prospect pods to come. Don't forget, T minus just over two weeks till the draft party. And man, we can't wait. We'll keep you up to date with the latest and greatest news, notes, and more from Pat's Nation each and every day here on Six Rings. Until then, thanks for listening. And as always, good day. God bless and go, Pats. <laughs>